Uh, cool. So hi, everyone. Uh, since this is the last talk for the day, let's do some power yoga, yeah? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> everyone. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. So today my talk is going to be about hype-driven development. You should have guessed by now that it has to be hooks. So yeah, hooks are new release in 16.8. Uh, and they let you do all of the stuff that you could do basically with class components. So let's see my journey, but before that, let me introduce you, who I am. So I'm Manjula Dube. I'm basically a web engineer at N26. Uh, N26 is a digital bank in Germany. And yeah. So initially, when Hooks was released, what I saw on my Twitter feeds was all about Hooks. I mean, I couldn't stop seeing. The moment I went on this feed, and I was like, oh my god, people are like going crazy. I, I refactored from this to this, and I refactored from this to this, and it was all about hooks. And you know, it made me crazy that I have to learn it now. Like, I have to, I have to do this thing. It doesn't matter, but I really have to do it. And somehow, I felt it was something like this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was crazy shit, but I had to learn it somehow. But, I mean, while I was doing this, what I felt is React developers, they have to really be very much fast forward in their life. Like, they have to really, you know, struggle a lot. Because every, every, every month, or not every month, by let's say five months down the line, there'll be something else, and you've got to stay updated with that, right? So it's really hard to be a React developer, right? <laughs> okay, so let's see what were the problems, uh, why we got hooks, and what were the problems with the classes. So to say that, for me, classes were confusing a little bit. And why? It's because the this binding, this was really crazy. I mean, for me, sometimes if I never used arrow function in my class component, I would still struggle to have all my custom methods in the constructor, which was really hard. Again, I mean, there were, if you figure out, there are still some unused methods still left while the compile time. So this is one of the things which makes hooks, you know? Yeah, so this were the things, and more often, if you see your minified version of, I mean, if you minify your file, if you see, you see that your component life cycles are still not minified, whereas using hooks would just give you that power to do that, right? So these were some of the things which I felt I should move from class component to hooks, and the next thing. So most of the time, so what happens is, you know, most of the component logic resides around the lifecycle methods, which makes it hard to reuse your logic, right? You have your consumers, providers, and a lot of things, and it goes to something like this. <laughs> which is crazy. And for this reason, let's start learning some of the few things by seeing some few examples that could relate you to refactor your class component to hooks, maybe. Cool, so uh, let's first look at uh, the first hook, which, which is called use state. So in this, basically, uh, we'll see, first we'll try and see the traditional way of doing stuff, and then we would see how we would do it using hooks. So. Let's say I have a simple counter example, and how would I do it is basically create a class component, have different custom methods, because it's a counter example. You would have increment and decrement as your custom methods. And yeah, this is how it is. But with 
hooks. What you do is you have your U state hook and you can pass, pass your initial value to it. And in this case, if you see the count is your state, that means this is going to update, whereas set count is your updater function, which means whenever you're trying, it will work the same way. Everything works the same way which was working in classes, but now here you have the ability to do all of the stuff in functions, right? So this is great. Like, this was one of the stuff because I usually struggled a lot creating a function component because I know for sure I would not have any state in this component. And then I went back and somebody says, okay, you know, you need to implement this feature. And I was like, fuck it, I have to make it a class component. Yeah, this happens. I mean, a lot of us have gone through this, right? Yeah, so this was a good thing that we got. And next thing, so this is like a four line code which makes everything very easy and you have, so one thing to remember here is also your use state doesn't rely on, so you do not need to pass only an object, but it can have string, number, array, do whatever you want to do. So this is a good thing because when, while you used this dot set state, you had to be careful that you can only pass a function or maybe an object, right? So in this case, it becomes a little bit easier because it makes me flexible enough as a developer. So yeah, this is a cool thing. Next, let's uh, see use effect. And uh, use effect was all about, you know, having an alternative for the component, like the life cycles which we had in React. And if you see this example, this was the traditional way, this is directly copy pasted from React docs, so nothing new. So if you see this example, this is basically like you go, you do something on component did mount and component did update, and you do it at both the places because component did update, if, if you want to render something just uh, after rendering your entire DOM, what you would do is you would have to put your logic at both the places, right? And then, this is how you would do it in use effect. Like, I mean, do you see the lines of code? It reduces, I mean, here, what you're trying to do is, you're trying to set the title, and you say, okay, you know, you've clicked the count. So you're basically, you have your uh, count variable in the state. And now, let's see how you would do it using use effect. So use effect is nothing, but it accepts a callback function. And there's one thing that I'm going to tell you further. Now, if you see this code, you would, you would actually think that you know, this effect is going to run on almost every render, which I don't want, because this is another side effect that is getting added to my component, right? And for this, let's see one more example. So this is nothing but, this is a small, uh, a functional component that is trying to create, that is trying to take API, that means your API URL and the params that you would pass to your API, and then you're trying to do something in use effect. But one thing to notice here is you've passed here params, right? Which means it will help, it will not run my effect on every render, and it will run only when the params changes. And params is nothing but the prop that is being passed from the component. So this is very something cool, because obviously if I'm trying to adapt to something new, I would not want to add another side effect in my component. So yeah, this was something cool. Also, one thing to remember is, uh, which I've not covered, but basically there could be a use case where you want to run your effect only once. So in that case, what you would do is you would pass it as a blank array. So I mean, these things are very cool to use, but you should know, you know when to apply, what to apply, because you might run into a trouble which you don't know. And then, let's see, use context, yeah? Uh, use context is very much similar to what we had by React Context API, but there are a few things, the way we do it is a little bit different. 
Let's see first the traditional way of doing things. Like this was the way we used to, we used to do it. We had the provider and then we had, we had different consumers and you could consume the data, right? Let's see how you would do it using use context. The way you do it is everything still remains the same because you need a provider to provide the data. But the only thing that changes is now you can access your context using use context. And one thing to remember is the thing that you pass to use context is context object and not the consumer object. So basically that's one of the difference which is important to note because if you don't do things correctly, it might just ruin your stuff. And then, this is the code that I usually make, that make the web a better place for React developers by using hooks. Yeah? <laughs> okay. So one thing to notice also, what made me use hooks is minify your code. So this really had one of the reasons which I tell that you should be embrace hooks in your code. So I did a small example. What I did is I used HOC. Uh, these are the links to the gist. You could just go and see. Uh, so these were the minified version. And uh, I did a very small example just to know, OK, if I'm trying to adapt something, let's know what, why I am using it. And uh, I did a small example with counter. I minified using HOC and hooks, and this was the difference. And trust me, if this is a difference in just a counter example, there can be a huge difference in your application. Right? So this is what made me do, go back to work, and you know, start using hooks in my application. Everybody wants this, so smaller bundle size and happy life, at least as a developer. Next, uh, now you must be thinking like, should I use hooks yet? I would say, why not? Just use it. <laughs> but with something using, there are certain rules that come into picture and you would need to take into account. So these are one of the things that don't call hooks inside loops. Don't call them in conditions or don't call them in nested functions. Make sure you call them at the top level. Make sure that you know uh, whenever you're calling uh, hooks, it's, it's, it's being called from React functions and not your JavaScript functions. And so these are some of the custom hooks uh, that people are building and you know they're trying and posting here because it's really cool stuff. So it's called usehooks.com. You can go there and check out how people are actually giving back to the community by building fantastic hooks. And yeah, uh, one more thing. So I came across this stuff called react.memo. And uh, if I have to say about react.memo, it's more or less similar to pure component. In which case, it will help you control your re-rendering. So if, if uh, what happens in pure component, if your props changes, only then your component should re-render. The same thing happens with react.memo. What it does is it basically, you should basically wrap your component around react.memo. So it will take care whether it should render or not. If there is a prop change, it will render, or if not, it will not render. It's very much similar to pure component. So yeah, you could also do it with your existing component. So let's say you've built your uh, functional component. You could just wrap it around react.mem. But you could not wrap it around your class component. You, your component should be your functional component, react functional component. Some key takeaways, which I got uh, while I was doing this is all of these stuff. So, you know, the uh, component did mount, component did update. So these three lifecycle methods are an alternative where you can use use effect. And uh, component, uh, should component update, 
and pure component. Instead of that, you can use react.memo. And then you have a constructor which says, OK, you know, because you don't, you don't need a constructor in a function component, since you can use the hooks you state, you know, you're saved again. And then uh, there are few methods which still doesn't have hooks alternative. I don't know when this is uh, planned to be coming, but yes, uh, component did catch and get derived state from error. There are still, uh, there are still no alternatives uh, when, you're, when you're using hooks. So there's no equivalent hooks uh, alternative. But yes, everything else is there. So you don't need to go back and change your functional component again to your class component, or vice versa. So we are good. And like, I would like to conclude that, that it doesn't mean that if you're not using hooks in your application, you're not a cool developer. I mean, ultimately what matters is your product is running fine. When you have time, you switch to something new, right? I mean, we all want to read somewhere, but it's slowly, right? I often compare it with the command uh, keyboards. Right? We have it on both the sides, but we often use the left one. Right? It's a habit. So if you see here, this one is React hooks, and this one is class component. But it takes time, and things happen. So be, stay calm, and things are going to happen. Thank you. <laughs>